Hey guys, welcome back. So today's video, we're going to talk about the new diagnosis system for periodontal disease. Uh, this video, it's pretty much I'm making this for anybody in the dental profession. It could be dentist, uh, assistants, hygienists, um, anybody who's uh, basically dealing with dentistry from day to day. Um, the older system for diagnosis was published by Dr. Armitage in 1999 and it was updated in 2015 by a task force which they made some small changes to it. They added probing depths and uh, pretty much radiographic bone loss to be used as new tools for diagnosis. This new system was um, uh, pretty much published in June 2018 in the Journal of Periodontology and last week I was in Vancouver for the annual um, AAP meeting and it was a big deal. Everybody was talking about this new system and to be honest even us as periodontal residents have a bit of a hard time understanding it so I'm hoping this video is going to help you uh, understand this new system and hopefully you can use it um, uh, for your for your patients. Alright guys so um, this is this is the most important table of uh, this whole presentation and I'm gonna go over some cases after um, just to give you guys some examples of how I diagnose my patients but basically the first thing you guys should look at when you have a patient in your chair is um, interproximal attachment loss so this first row here okay so stage one one to two, two millimeters of attachment attachment loss stage two three to four millimeters and stage three and four are both um, equal to or greater than five millimeters okay and the way you differentiate between stage three and four is um, once you make sure your attachment uh, levels are correct, all your probing depths, all your gingival margin positions are correct, and you have the correct um, attachment level, uh, you're gonna you look at other stuff. So um, this is this row here, tooth loss. So if you have um, two perio tooth loss of equal to or less than four teeth, that's stage three. If you have equal to or greater than five, that's stage four. The only way you could use this row um, is if you know the patient lost teeth due to periodontal disease. If they lost teeth due to caries or other reasons, then you can't use this row, okay? But if you're sure they lost those teeth because of periodontal disease, uh, then you can differentiate easily between stage three and four. Uh, three would be less than four teeth or equal to four teeth, and then stage four would be five or more teeth. The other things you can look at to differentiate between stage three and four is for stage four, um, you have some other complexity factors as they call it in this new new system. So if they have um, basically severe ridge defect, if they have bite collapse, if they got occlusal trauma, tooth mobility of um, let's say uh, degree two or more, uh, if they have less than 20 teeth remaining, so that, that makes an automatic stage four, okay? So again, the first thing you should you guys should look at. I mean, just keep it simple. Don't uh, don't uh, make it too complicated for yourself. Just look at inner proximal attachment level. That's the the first thing you guys should look at. Um, and after that, you can go ahead and look at radiographic bone level. This RBL, that's what that stands for. Um, and you can look at that to help you. But um, the, uh, the the tool that you would use to come up with your diagnosis would be uh, the inner proximal attachment level, okay? Um, and then you got your extent. So once you come up with the stage, either stage one, two, three, or four, you have to say whether it's localized or generalized or um, does it have a molar incisor pattern. So if it's less than 30% of the teeth, you would call it localized. If it's more than 30% of the teeth, you would call it generalized. If it's only if it's only involving molars and incisors, then you would call it a molar incisor pattern. The reason why they included this is because in this new system, there's no more um, you, you you don't have the the diagnosis of juvenile or aggressive periodontitis. You, so that's why they included this molar incisor pattern. So you would still first come up with the stage, and then uh, describe it with the the extent. So. Um, there's only one stage per patient, and you're gonna you're gonna look at the worst tooth, okay? And there's only one grade per patient. So, if let's say there's only one tooth that you guys diagnose as stage three, and the rest of the teeth are stage one or two, you would still call it localized stage three, right? 
Um, so that's something to keep in mind. Only one stage and only one grade per patient. Uh, and these are some complexity factors that are meant to make your lives a bit easier. So if you have um, vertical bone loss of three millimeters or more um, on a radiograph, then you could automatically, you know, it's going to be stage three or four. Uh, and then you would have to go back to the table that I showed right now to differentiate between three or four, okay? So if, let's say, um, you're looking at your inner proximal attachment level and it's all um, ones and twos, you're not going to call it stage one if they have a vertical bone loss of three millimeters, okay? That's going to automatically shift it to stage three or four. Same thing with frication. So if somebody has a frication involvement of class two or three, again, that's going to be automatic stage three or four. Uh, and if your patient has periodontitis and they have less than 20 teeth remaining, automatic stage four. So these are pretty easy uh, to keep in mind, and it's, it's pretty fast. If, if a patient has this, you can easily and quickly diagnose them. So grading. So you have grade A, grade B, and grade C. So this is to predict the progression of disease, okay? So grade A is slow, grade B is moderate, grade C is rapid. So if you have um, data from um, previous periodontal charting and um, you see that the patient has had no attachment loss for over five years, that would be grade A. Grade B would be less than two millimeters of attachment loss over five years. Anything two or more over five years would be rapid. Um, you can also look at percent bone loss over age. So if um, you look at the, the radiographs, if they lost 50% bone loss and they're 50, uh, 50 years old, 50 over 50 would be one. So that would be, that would be classified as grade C, that would be rapid. Uh, you could also look at um, the level of destruction um, in relation to the amount of uh, plaque that you have. So if you have a lot of plaque with low levels of destruction, that's a slow, that's a slow progressing disease. If you have destruction that's similar, uh, that makes sense with the amount of plaque that's present, would be grade B. And if you have a lot of destruction, but the patient's hygiene is good and they don't have much plaque, that would be grade C. Uh, and that's same, you can look at smoking, diabetes. You're probably not going to use um, CRP. This is a marker for inflammation. So you could um, pretty much forget about that. But um, yeah, so you would look at a couple of these things. Uh, the more... Um, uh, the more information you have, the easier it is to come up with uh, with a grade. But I mean, all all that uh, all the reason why we have grading is just to predict the progression of disease. So let's say if you have um, the percent bone loss over age, you find that to be less than 0.25. But at the same time, the patient is smoking more than 10 cigarettes a day. I would still put them as a grade C because. Um, that's gonna that's gonna basically uh, increase the progression rate of disease. Okay, so you have to look at all these factors before you come up with that with the grade. So we have a 45 year old patient that presents to your clinic with chief complaint, saying that I was told I need to get my gums looked at. So he's non smoker, he's healthy. So you look at his gums, uh, you do your probing depths, your gingival margins, your clinical attachment levels. Uh, these are his x-rays, as you guys can see, a lot of bone loss in the upper posterior teeth, um, some bone loss here in the lower posterior, same thing on the, on the left side. So um, here I'm just giving you the uh, clinical, sorry about that, I'm just giving you the clinical attachment levels. Um, so I'm assuming you guys know how to come up with that. Basically, you would have to add your probing depth to your um, gingival margin. Uh, position and you come up with your attachment level okay so based on this diagnosis um, we have some six millimeters here seven uh, we got some fives here also some six and sevens so we could safely say it's the stage three okay then we look at how many teeth have greater than or equal to five millimeters of interproximal um, atta uh, attachment loss so we have six teeth that have five or more millimeters of interproximal attachment loss. So if you guys can go ahead and calculate that, but I'll, I already did that for you and it's six teeth. 
So 6 over 32, that's 18.75%. So we said if it's less than 30%, that would be localized. So since less than 30% of the teeth, then we can say the extent is localized. And the diagnosis would be localized stage 3. What would be the, the grade here, okay? So again, I'm putting up this table for you guys. So we don't have any longitudinal data. We don't have any periodontal charts from before. What we do have is basically he's a non-smoker, so we're not going to use this. He's healthy, he's not, so basically he's non-diabetic, we're not going to use that. But we could use percent bone loss over age. So if we look at this radiograph, you got almost 50 to 60 percent bone loss. And our patient was um, 45 years old. So 60 percent bone loss over 45, obviously that's going to give you more than one. And you could safely say it's localized stage 3, grade C. All right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed the video, you learned something, and hopefully I didn't bore you too much. Um, pretty much this is a new system that's going to be used from now on. Uh, and I'm, I've, I've heard some rumors that even for the dental boards, they're going to be using this new system. Nobody knows when, but eventually it's going to be incorporated. Um, so please, if you have any questions, just leave a comment below, send me a message, and I'll uh, hopefully I can clarify more for you. Um, thank you, and I'll see you guys next time.